I have one boy in my class, he has Asperger's. It's a form of autism. And I think the statistics are that basically there's at least one child on average in every single class that has a form of autism. It might be shocking to you, but that is the truth. That is statistics. There's over 600 forms of autism, and this is one of them. He's a very bright boy. He's a very good ball player. He just cannot look you in the eye, and he can't communicate well. Sits right next to me. And I'm just going to describe him a little bit. His belt goes around his waist and then another half time. His pants are always a little bit too short. And he's always the last one to leave the classroom. 26 boys had given their chaburis one after another, two or three a day. And I said to this boy, are you ready to give chabur as well? He said, yes, I'm going to give chabur. Okay? But he ayayim, it was a Thursday. He said, I'm going to give chabur. And he got up to give chabur. And he asked me beforehand, can I invite my last year's Rebbe? And can I invite the Menal to sit in? Of course. What a moment it was going to be. I took a picture of every boy saying chabur. Some of them I even videotaped. And I called on this boy to give his chaburah. And the boy got up. And he stood there for a minute and a half. And he couldn't open his mouth. To give you an idea of what a minute and a half is, I'm going to be quiet for 10 seconds now. That's 10. For a minute and a half, the boy stood there. I'm not embarrassed to say that I was crying in the back of the room. And I said to the Manal, what should I do? And he said, maybe go over to him and put your arm around him and help him say it. Get him started. And I walked over to him and I put my hand on him and he jumped and he looked at me. And then I whispered to him, do you want to sit down and give one other boy a chance first? And he nodded yes. Okay. While that minute and a half was going on, the boys in the shear, some of them, their eyes were closed. Some were saying Tehillim. Not Sadiqim. I'm not talking about the Sadiqim in the shear. I'm talking about the troublemakers. Everybody could sense there was something. The next boy got up and he gave a chabura and he gave out diagrams on the sukkah. And it was a brilliant chabura and he tied together two different machloiksim, Meiri and Rashba, if you can believe it. And as that was going on, I wrote a little note to the boy next to me and I said to him, would you like to say the chabura looking towards the front of the room so you don't have to face the crowd? And he nodded, yes. And so again, after this boy finished, I again re- introduced him and again it was quiet as he sat trying to say one word he couldn't do it at this point being honest with you a lot of boys had tears I certainly did and I told the boys at the time the following it was a last stab to try to salvage the moment and I said I want you to know that there's a chalik of Torah that is so chalik, so holy that it doesn't even come out into this world in a form of gashmias it goes directly from a person's neshama to the kisei akavid and that is this boy's chabura that he prepared and I dismissed the shir to a break we have a small little break in the hallway it's not a full blown recess and I went over to the manal and I said, I failed. I'm waiting for the end of the story for the boy to have the Rudy moment. The moment when he's the underdog on the team and he catches the winning pass and he wins the game, but it didn't happen. And what if he never gets up again for the rest of his life? And Manal told me, don't worry, we can try. And I, I was very, very broken. And I walked back into the room and his head's down. He's the only boy in the room. And I whispered to him, would you like to say the Chabura right now? No one's in the room. No. It was 12.30 at 1 o'clock 
I dismissed the shear, and as I said, he's the last boy. And I'm walking out of the room, and all of a sudden I hear him call my name. He says, Rabbi. I said, yeah. He said, can I try again tomorrow? This is exactly the way it happened. I told him, of course. He managed to smile, and tomorrow came. And I said to him, you ready? And Sunday came. Are you ready? And Monday at 12.30, I didn't ask him. But he picked up his head and he looks at me and he says, Rebbe, I'm ready. And he got up and he delivered a flawless chabura for five minutes in front of the entire shear. And when he finished, they erupted with a standing ovation. And I will tell you, it's the nicest thing that ever happened in my classroom. And I can tell you that today, the boys every other week give a Dvar Torah. Half the class gives a Dvar Torah in front of everybody else. And today, he got up and flawlessly gave a beautiful Dvar Torah on his own volition in front of the class. It's scary. When you have something that you want to say that is locked inside of you, that you know is mamish, the essence of your neshama, that you've worked on for weeks and you want to express it, but it can't come out. Not because you have Asperger's or autism, but because you're a regular person with feelings and emotions and hurt and pain. And those words are locked inside of you and you can try once and twice and three times. And you might fail. But one day, soon, Bikariv, you will look at the Rabbi Nishalaylam and you will say, Rabbi Nishalaylam, I am ready. And you will pick up the phone and you will be Marbe Shalom Ba'ilam. And because of that, Klal Yisrael will be healed. One piece at a time.